Good morning. So last week I forgot announcements. So then I had to send an email out to people to invite, invite them to the women's lunch that was on Monday. So hard to remember from Sunday to Monday. And I put up on Facebook last night that today is potluck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but... Not everybody relied on me to remember, which is great. And there is food for potluck, so please do come and join us after service today. Um, I want to bring to your attention, November 10th, after worship, that we're going to have one of those conversations. We started off as council and committees, and then we had some folk who said, well, why can't I come? Of course you can come. So now... After worship at coffee time or towards the end of it, I'm inviting you to come and sit around a table and hear what each other are doing. What are the committees doing? To have a time when you can ask us questions about what we are doing and what is happening in the church. If you have questions that are very, very specific, could you let me know ahead of time so that I can pretend to know what you're talking about? and have accurate information for you, okay? Um, and we'll change this. I have November 15th for the Christmas tea and it's the 16th. The rest are either on the slides that happen before our worship service or in your bulletin or they'll be in TSN next week. We have lots of ways for you to get your inf information. You are welcome. To this place, Camrose United Church, where we strive to be a place where all of God's people are welcome, a place that is safe and feels like home, a place that works to embody bold discipleship, daring justice, and deep spiritual connectedness in God's world. We share stories of the things that God has done, acts of power and love shared throughout history, and from the stories, we learn how to care for each other. And we remember how much God loves us, all of us. We invite the light of the holy to come and join us in this place. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And the light was born. We give thanks that God's light shows us where we are and where we are meant to be. We remember God creating, loving, lighting our way from the beginning. We remember Jesus' commandment to love one another to accept everyone as our neighbor, worthy of love and care and respect. As we light the rainbow candle, we give thanks for Jesus' invitation to live bold inclusivity and extend the welcome of God to all people. We remember that humankind was given responsibility to look after the earth and all things living on it. We acknowledge the First Nations Cree, Assiniboine, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Nakota Sioux, who traveled on and tended to this land, lived and loved on it long before settlers and those who are descendants of settlers knew it. We light the orange candle as a visible reminder of our commitment to live into the promises of Treaty 6, to be the generations who live with integrity to right the wrongs of the past, to engage in the healing of the earth and of all of God's people.
So I have a question for you. Take a deep breath. What does peace look like? Oh, good. <laughs> Camrose United Church. All right. Anything else? What does peace look like? Love and caring. Not having to look over your shoulder all the time. Not having to look over your shoulder all the time. No war. No war. Having your needs met. Finding quiet peace within. Finding that quiet within. Beautiful friendships. In the midst of war, hundreds of boots on the ground, helping and healing. Working to resolve conflict, Working to resolve conflict. steps towards peace. Absolutely. Having a grandchild. Having a grandchild. Oh, hugging. I was going to say, having, that's not peaceful sometimes. <laughs> hugging. Hugging the grandchild. <laughs> Sharing. Sharing. Free. Free. What do you mean by free? Free to do what you wish. Peacefully. I mean, you can go out or you can stay in. You don't have to abide by a dictator's rule. Okay. So, you, so free is freedom to make your own choices. Yes. Is that, that what I'm hearing? Because when you said free, my head said you shouldn't have to pay for it. <laughs> and you shouldn't, should you? You should not have to pay for peace. So both of those things. Yes. And you shouldn't have to pay for it with funds, and you shouldn't have to pay for it with lives. The world is a bit of a mess. And for many of us that sit in this place, we have moments of peace. We have choices we can make that can help us find peace or partnerships, or people we can gather. But there are other people and other places who don't have those options right now. And today is Peace Sunday, and you'll notice there's a question mark after that on the title of your bulletin. Because for Peace Sunday, for some people, there is no peace. There is no quiet. They have to look over their shoulder all the time. Which is not said to bring us down, but to remind us that our reality is not somebody else's reality. And it's not that we're lucky, it's where we are. But we need to appreciate what we do have and the choices we can make for ourselves and to find ways, no matter how small, to give somebody else that chop that choice, to give somebody else that welcome, to help somebody else find their peace. I invite you to join your hearts and your voices with me in the prayer of awareness and connection. This prayer comes to us from David Sparks. God is with us all the time. With us when the war clouds swirl. With us working for peace. With us when there are fires and floods. With us enabling us to be helpers. 
with us meeting the needs of the lonely, with us giving an invitation to be a whole community, with us when there is hard testing, with us encouraging patient endurance, with us when the harvest fails, with us offering to share from our plenty, with us when our faith is downplayed, calling us to live out our Christianity hour by hour, day by day, when it seems the time of trial will never end, in Christ our hope is eternal. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God knows us. God hears our hearts yearning for peace and has promised to walk with us as we find ways to love the world. We can trust that God will guide us, will give us all that we need to make the world a brighter place. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Good morning. From the International Children's Bible, the word Jeremiah 31, 7 to 9. This is what the Lord says. Be happy and sing for the people of Jacob. Shout for Israel, the greatest of the nations, and sing your praises and shout this, Lord, save your people. Save those who are left alive from the nation of Israel. Look, I will bring Israel from the country in the north. I will gather them from the faraway places on earth. And some of the people are blind and crippled. Some of the women will be pregnant and ready to give birth. And a great many people will come back. Those people will be crying as they come back but they will pray as I bring them back. And I will lead those people by streams of water, and I will lead them on an even road where they will not stumble. And from the Common English Bible, Mark 10, 46 to 52. This is the healing of blind Martimius. Jesus and his followers came into Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho together with his disciples in a sizable crowd, a blind beggar named Artemius, Timius' son, was sitting beside the road. And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. And many scolded him, telling him to be quiet. But he shouted even louder, Son of David, show me mercy. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him forward. And they called the blind man. Be encouraged. Get up. He's calling you. And throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Teacher, I want to see. And Jesus said, Go, your faith has healed you. And at once he was able to see, and he began to follow Jesus on the way. Scripture is our song for the journey, passed down from generation to generation to guide and inspire. And God calls us to be the doers of the word and not hearers only.
Well, today's reflection, I had to do a little bit of research on. So I would like to offer my gratitude to commentators Michael Ruffin and Matt Skinner, who gave me some words and some information. Today has many names. It could be called Proper 25, or the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, Reformation Sunday, or Peace Sunday. And this year there will also be congregations honoring All Saints Day, as that falls on November 1st, in the middle of the week. I chose Peace Sunday, but I put a question mark after that. Because while this is a day when we are encouraged to pray for peace, we know that it won't, can't happen today. If our lives are mostly free from fighting and arguing and violence, we need to acknowledge that there are so many more that are not. Our faith tells us that God wants us to be bold in helping others, to be daring in ensuring that justice prevails, to be faithful in loving the world as God would have us love. And as I read the short passage from Jeremiah, I wondered how someone living in a war, exiled from their home, would hear this. This is a very small portion of chapters 30 and 31, which some interpreters call the Book of Consolation. Because in it, God promises restoration and renewal to a people who had experienced the destruction of Jerusalem and at least three decades of crisis. God promised to restore both Israel and Judah, north and south from Assyria and Babylon, where they had been exiled to. Symbolism of the whole world, the whole people of God. Here is one aspect of what we might call a biblical reversal where in some places you see the opposites happening. So whereas the people once went into exile to the north, they would now return home from the north. The exile journey would be replaced by the homeward journey. And it is important to note that the people will not come home on their own. God will bring them. It is also important to note those who are named as those whom God will bring home, the survivors of war and exile, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. These are the ones who might have been expected to be left behind because their need for extra attention would slow down the return home and instead their inclusion is highlighted. Those who are vulnerable and who require the community's compassionate care will be the honored guests on the journey home. I wonder if someone who has been forced from their home, from their country, would hear this and find hope. Hope that they would return Hope that they won't be left behind. Hope that God will be with them on the way. And I wonder how hard it is to hear the hope when your life is collapsing around you, when you can't find a place to call home, when you feel as though you or your loved ones have been so damaged that you might expect to be left behind. In our Mark passage, we meet a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, one of those vulnerable folk who often got left behind. He was bold in his conviction that Jesus not only could, but would rescue him from where he was and get him returned again to a society that had mostly rejected him. His deep faith gave him hope in the most dire of circumstances, This blind man was able to see how Jesus could heal and help him, and he knew that he deserved it, so Bartimaeus made noise. 
he shouted, demanding attention. And I wonder if he was simply done with being ignored or passed by as if he was invisible. The people around him tried to stop him. They were embarrassed. They tried to limit who Jesus could offer compassion and healing to, and they were wrong. Jesus asked him what he wanted, and Bartimaeus' response shows complete confidence that Jesus could bring the wholeness and help that he was seeking. In Jeremiah's story, it is God that brings the people out of trouble. It is God who names that everyone is worthy and none will be left behind. In Mark's story, it is Jesus who amplifies that we need to see those in need and hear them when they call out for help. We need to ask what help they want, not just give them what we think they want. In so many corners of the world right now, there are voices calling out for justice, longing to be heard. We need to hear them and stand with them. There are people who feel as though they are considered worthless, and we need to remind them that everyone counts. Everyone is worthy. Bartimaeus shows us the life-changing power of faith, that when we call, God, Jesus, is there to give us what we need. The exiles of Israel and Judah show us that through all kinds of hardship, God will bring us home. On Peace Sunday, we pray for peace. We pray that those who are hurt, who have found themselves displaced from their homes and cultures, will find a place that holds them close, that protects them, nourishes them, we pray that those who are missed will be courageous enough to yell at us until we hear them and see them and help them. We pray that we can, like Jesus, be open to learning that all people have value. All people deserve to be supported, respected, so that they don't have to fight their way through life. For me, there's a question mark on Peace Sunday because it needs a lot of work to make it happen. We know it needs to happen, and we know that God will guide us into the work that is needed. We need the faith of Bartimaeus and of the people of Israel and Judah to inspire us to do what God needs us to do. We each have an image of what peace could look like. There are many people with different peace images, and I hope that we can offer hands, feet, and hearts of peace. I hope that peace looks like us. Amen.
God asks us to consider how we live our faith, to be part of making a difference for someone, to consider how we can offer something to transform a small portion of God's world. Your generosity offers hope and a sense of community. With your generous support, many Canadian seniors who might otherwise face empty plates this season are able to enjoy nutritious meals and maintain their dignity throughout the year. The Food Security for Elders program relies on your support to provide grocery cards to Indigenous elders in the Morley First Nation and Lethbridge, Alberta area where access to healthy food is limited. Without your support, these seniors face the harsh reality of choosing between essential needs and nourishing meals. They need your help to ensure their tables are filled with the food they deserve. In a time of rising grocery prices and economic challenges, your kindness ensures that our most vulnerable neighbors are not left to struggle with food insecurity. Your gifts help transform their experience from one of worry and scarcity to one of comfort and nourishment. With your support, elders can enjoy healthier meals and maintain their well-being. Your generosity through mission and service gives more than just food. It offers hope and a sense of community. As we continue through our seasons of gratitude, we extend our heartfelt thanks to you for making such a significant impact. Thank you. We each have something we can share. We can share prayer. Through the voices of our heart and our minds, we can add hope and healing into the world. We can share our time as workers, as listeners, as storytellers, as teachers and learners. We can share our treasure. We know that some people have more spare change than others. But every penny counts when it teams up with others. Through this togetherness, we support our local church and its works, and the work of the global church, reaching out to care for all of God's world, a little bit at a time. I invite us to stand as we are able and sing, I'm going to live so God can use me. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me.
Please be seated. Our prayer for God's people from God's people is brought to us today from a prayer with, for peace with justice in Israel and Palestine that was written in 2015 by Alida Smith. It has been tweaked just a little bit. Holy One, today we turn our hearts and prayers towards peace for your world. Peace without justice is not peace for all. So we weave both of these prayers together. You help us seek peace, justice, hope, and dignity for all. You lead us towards courageous actions. With United Church partners around the world, United Church workers and advocates of peace, faithfully journey to places of unrest, instability, and fear, to advocate for the basic human rights of all people, to support the peace builders who are actively resisting the dehumanizing forces of violence. Even though there is uncertainty, indifference, and opposition, grant us the strength to continually seek ways of offering justice-driven peace and end to occupation, and end to war, so that those who are victims can create a better future for themselves. There are so many people and places that need the healing power of peace, including indigenous peoples, LGBTQ plus peoples, Palestinians, Israelis, Lebanese, Ukrainians, Russians, Sudanese, people in Myanmar, Mexico, Colombia, the United States. Even though we are mindful of the volatile present, we dream of a time when these places and people will be seen as symbols of hope, peace, and reconciliation. Holy One, May your healing spirit draw close to the multitude of injured and grieving people, the physically and emotionally oppressed. May your love gather up the hopeless. May your presence comfort and strengthen your children in their suffering. God, may we live out our faith at tables open for truth-telling as listeners and learners. May we be willing to witness injustice and be bold enough to work against it. May we be willing participants in offering hope and peace to a hurting world. With your help, may we continue to seek justice and resist evil all the days of our lives until all are able to live abundantly. Amen. We are blessed to be able to share in the love of God. We are blessed to be able to pray and worship and work together. Let us leave this place known and loved by God to offer blessings to God's world with thankfulness and praise. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
with spirit-filled hearts for welcoming all of God's people. With commitment to be the part of healing God's world. Let us follow the light of Christ that shines into all of the corners of the earth, showing us where we are and where we are meant to be. The Spirit of God, breathe it in. And know that God is indeed with us wherever we go. Amen. Amen.